and the opportunity to be in his presence this morning. Spirit of the living God, we just want to thank you. We do not take it for granted who you are to us and what you have done for us. We know that you are Lord over every situation and every circumstance. You know where your people are. You know what every man and woman requires and needs. I'm depending on you this morning, Holy Spirit, to flow through these lips of clay of mine. Let Jesus be glorified tonight. I mean this morning rather. Let every burden be lifted here this morning. Let no man leave here the same way they came. We give you the glory in advance. Come on, lift up your hands and thank him in advance. We give you the glory in advance for what you are going to do. Come on, lift up your hands and thank him in advance for what he is going to do. Yes, Lord, we receive it. We receive it by faith this morning. Let it be unto us according to our expectation. Let it be unto us uh, according to our desires. In the name of Jesus, we pray. If you are sure about that, you say better amen as you take your seats. We'd like to welcome those of us who are here physically and those who are joining us online. We appreciate all of our online viewers. I believe that God's name will be glorified in your life and on your behalf. Amen. This morning, uh, or this service essentially is a, a empowerment Sunday. And in the first service, I spoke on platforms for empowerment the areas, the avenues that God intends to empower us that we need to take advantage of this year. In the second service, I'll be going a different route or route. Amen. Depending on the one, amen. You're familiar with, amen. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Some of these things do cause confusion at times, amen. English, um, British English, American English. That's what I mean. Amen, somebody. Philippians 4 verse 13. Philippians 4 verse 13 says, <laughs> Apostle Paul says, I can do some things. I can do few things. I can do how many things? Now, what is all things? Are you sure everything is all things? Are we in agreement this morning? All things means what? Everything. Paul says, I can do all things uh, through Christ that does what? Through Christ that strengthens uh, me. So that means uh, that Christ uh, is the one that produces or makes available the strength uh, for him uh, to do whatever he needs to do. Now, I think I've said it here before, and I want to say it again for the purpose of emphasis. Um, I want you to know that Christ is not the last name of Jesus. Hello? Am I making sense to you this morning? I said Christ is not the last name of what? Jesus. Just like we will say, Yemi Adelti. Adelti is my what? Last name, son name, amen, somebody. And whatever name you are called by. And the reason I'm saying this is for you to understand that Christ uh, talks about uh, the title. Christ talks about the person of Jesus. Amen, somebody. That word Christ actually means uh, the anointed one. And uh, so anytime you see the word Christ... Is the word Christos in the Greek? Uh, 
the, 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 I, mean, the, the, I mean, the equivalent of that word in the Hebrew is the word Messiah. Amen, somebody? I said amen. It's talking about the one who anoints. Or oh, let me say it, you know, you understand. The one who empowers. The one who makes strength and power available. There is no how you talk about the anointed one without talking about the anointing. Just like wherever you go, your shadow follow you. I'm going somewhere this morning. I want you to follow me. Paul is saying, I can do all things, everything through the anointing. Listen, the anointing is one of the bases of God's empowerment. That is one of the ways uh, God makes power, strength uh, available to you and I. And Paul is saying, I can do all things. Now, wh when you look at this scripture, it is big, all things. What does that mean? I can do life uh, through the anointed one. I can do ministry through the anointed one. I can do business through the anointed one. I can do my career through the anointed one. I can do, I mean, my academics. There is virtually nothing that all does not come. I can do marriage. Amen, somebody? Through the anointed. Listen, most of the time, we have limited the use of God's empowerment to only spiritual things. It's beyond that. Amen? Amen. Businessmen in the house this morning. Hear the word of the Lord. Um, the anointing God's empowerment. Is supposed to make the difference in your business. Otherwise. Uh, how will people truly know that you are called by the name of the Lord? I got this revelation when I was in school. In the uni. And, and it's so much down on me that... Uh, I, I said to myself, my grades have to be different. My case is different. Amen, somebody. My story is different. Listen, my association with Christ uh, is not just supposed to affect my spirit. It's supposed to affect every area of my life. Amen. We are supposed to be the sign of show of all eyes. We are supposed to be the, the lens uh, through which people will see God. And this morning, I'm speaking this morning on putting the empowerment or putting his empowerment to work. When we say empowerment, we're talking about power authority that is given to somebody to do something. I'm going to be speaking from the dimension of someone who has received an empowerment. You have. Amen, somebody. The problem we have is what I call underutilization or a lack of awareness. The Bible says you will know the truth. John 8, 32. The truth you know will set you free. Hosea 4, verse 6 says, my people, God's people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. Hosea 6, verse 3 says, then shall we know. When we follow on to know, that's what we call progressive knowledge, progressive revelation. And this morning, I want you to know that it's not enough for you to have received his empowerment. It's not enough for you to have his empowerment. What you do with it matters. You need to know how to put it to work. Hello? I said, hello, somebody. You carry something, but you must know how to activate it. Or what benefits or what use uh, is to have power that you don't know how to tap into it. You know, the word dunamis is one of the words that is used uh, to translate power in the Bible. Acts 1.8, you shall receive power. Actually, it means dunamis. Amen, somebody? The, you get the word dynamite. You get the word dynamo. You get the word dynamic. From dunamis, the power that you see, what is a dynamo? A dynamo is like a machine that converts mechanical, you know, power to electrical power. So you are a turbine, you are a turbine of God's power, amen. amen. And listen to me, God's people, this morning, He's an his empowerment that is on you, with you, for you. It's not supposed to be in vain. 
You know when God appeared on the Gideon when he was threshing wheat to hide it from the Midianites, God told them through the angel of the Lord, it says that the Lord is with you. Listen, it didn't say the Lord is going to be with you. It said the Lord is with you. Amen, somebody. Hello? Judges 6 verse 12. The Lord is with you. Thou mighty man. Look at what we call it. Mighty man of valor. The word valor there talks about strength. It talks about might. It talks about riches. It talks about wealth. You are. He didn't say you are going to be. He said you are. Obviously Gideon was looking around. Who is God talking to? You know what God told him? Next verse 14. He says go in this your might. In other words, go in the strength of what you have received. Go in the strength of what you have. It says, you will strike the Midianite as one man. Have I not sent you? Listen to me. In the name that is above every other name, God's empowerment will speak in your life this year. Listen, you carry something. Amen, somebody? You carry treasure. You carry power. You are the embodiment of his power and grace. And listen, that power will be made manifest to your world in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen to that effect? Go in these your might. You will save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? Has he not equipped thee? Has he not empowered thee? Has he not enabled thee? I pray for you once again this morning. His empowerment will not fail in the name of Jesus. That's why we are talking about how to put it to work. If I have power, how do I put it to work? If I have strength, how do I energize it? Because you have it. I said you have it. I said you have it. You are not trying to have it. If you are a child of God, you already possess it. Colossians 1 27, Christ in you. <laughs> Who is Christ? The anointed one. Christ in you. He's the hope of glory. The expectation of a glorious life. The confident expectation that something good is going to happen lies in the fact, lies in your understanding of the revelation of the anointed one. So look at your neighbor and tap your neighbor. Tell him it's time to put his empowerment to work. Put it to work. Look at him say, put it to work. Put it to work. Put it to work. Put it to work. Some very important truths you must understand about empowerment. Probably I'll just say three very quickly before I go into how to put it to work. The first one is that you are never without his empowerment. Never. You are never, listen, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what condition of life you are. You are never, as a child of God, you are never without his empowerment. What does that mean? That simply means that you have access to God's power. Listen, you are not trying to get access to it. You already have access to it. Amen, somebody. I said, amen, somebody. It says, let us therefore come boldly. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may find grace and mercy to help. You have access to that place. Amen, somebody. Listen, you are not like the priest under the old covenant. Who has to go through an intermediary. You have direct access. Sometimes you say, I have direct access. <laughs> Listen, that's why... The issue of empowerment is not supposed to be an issue with you. You know, Paul was describing a situation, 2 Timothy 4 verse 16, part of his defense of the gospel. He said, at my first answer, nobody stood with me. All men forsook me. But I love what he said in verse 18. He says, nevertheless, the Lord stood by me, stood with me and strengthened me. Glory be to Jesus. Listen, men may leave you. Just make sure that God does not leave you. That is the cocoa. Amen, somebody. That is what matters the most. Uh, 
And I want to say this to you today in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what circumstance you have. It doesn't matter what you are passing through. Listen to this. You are never without his empowerment. Shout out me say, I am never. Say like you are sure. Say, I am never without God's empowerment. No matter where you are. Listen, you have access. The choir sang this morning about the name of Jesus. You can call that name any day, any time. Amen, somebody? The Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 10, the name of the Lord is what? A strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are what? They are saved. That name is available. Very important. Number two. Second truth about empowerment that you must know is that you have been empowered for this life. I am, you are empowered for what? This life. Let me say this to you. What is happening today in the world is not news to God. The challenge that the human race is facing now mm -hmm. with the pandemic and all kinds of stuff is not something that has taken God by surprise or by storm. No. And it's not by mistake that you are alive today in this season. Because so say, ah, I wish I had, I, mean, I, I had existed before. No, God does not make mistakes. Are you here this morning? Look at your neighbor and say, you are empowered for life. Notice what I said. I didn't say you are empowered for a season for your life. Watch this. Look at God. This is how God operates. Do you know that after God created the universe, he did not have to create anything again. Listen, we have over 7 billion people today on the face of the earth. Listen to this. It was what he created at the beginning. That is where we are drawing for from today. There is no extent to which the population of the universe we get that what God has put here will not be enough to sustain humanity. So listen, you are on stage now. Say after me, say I'm on stage. And God has empowered you for the business of living. Everything that you are going to need, everything that you are going to be required, he's already provided. It's not something he's trying to provide. It's something that is already provided. He's just waiting for your discovery. He's just waiting for your understanding. He's just waiting for how to assess it. And may your eyes be open today, today, today to see into the treasure, to see into the power that is available to you in the name of Jesus. Listen, the day you get to know who you are, and whose you are. Some of the troubles, uh, some of the worries uh, that we, um, things we worry about will no longer be an issue. Tell your neighbor, say you are empowered for this life. Oh, when I look at what God has put in you, when I look at what God has put around us, when I look at his gifts, his abilities, his graces, his anointing. When I look at the Holy Spirit, when I look at, listen, you have fortified heavily. See, after me, say, I am empowered for life. Say, say that's why 2021, <laughs> God has gotten me ready for it. Listen, you are ready. You are, listen, God has prepared you ahead of time by his empowerment. That's what I was saying on Friday. By the anointing, you will rise in 2021. That amen is not born again. You will not only walk, you will run and not be worried. You will, I mean, you will soar high like an eagle. You are moving forward. You are not just moving forward. You are going far. You are not just going far. Listen to this. You are going to be a high flyer in 2021 in the name of Jesus. Talk truth about his empowerment. His empowerment is available, is available to help and to assist you. 
God's empowerment will enable you to be all that you were designed to be. To do all that you were designed to do. Listen, to get to where you were designed. Listen, the, the, the empowerment of God is there to help and what aid you. Now the question is this, uh, what do you want to do or what were you meant to do? Where were you meant to go? Who were you designed to be? His empowerment is available. <laughs> you know people always say this, like that man in John 5, I have no helper. I have no one to help me. <laughs> Tell anybody say you have all the help that you need. <laughs> Paul said I can do all things. You know where he wrote that 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 epistle from? He wrote it from a prison cell. He wrote it where he was locked up in a dungeon. Listen, the environment notwithstanding, that does not change the truth of God's word. Are you the house this morning? You have God's empowerment. It's available to help. Listen, whatever you do, li listen, whatever chosen field of endeavor, whatever trade, whatever sphere of influence you have, you have his empowerment to help and to aid you. The Bible says you have received an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. 4 John 2, 27. And the anointing that you have received abides in you and that anointing teaches you of all things. Whatever you were meant to be, wherever you were meant to go, whoever you are supposed to be or whatever you are supposed to accomplish this year, by the anointing, by his empowerment, it is already established in the name of Jesus. Always remember this. In the journey of life, in the business of life, uh, listen, you are never without his help. He's in, the reason he empowered is to help and assist you. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. That's why he's making ways. I said he's making ways where there seems to be no way. He's going to open doors that no man can shut. He's going to shut doors that no man can open in the name of Jesus. So how do I put this empowerment to work? <laughs> if I have it. If this empowerment is there. If I've been empowered for life. The power that is available. How do I put it to work? I'm going to say three quick things this morning. I'm believing the Holy Spirit to illuminate. And to expand further on this as I speak this morning. How do I get this empowerment to work? You get this empowerment to work. Number one, when you start putting faith. You need to put faith in the empowerment that you have received. Listen, the power will not work if you don't have faith and confidence in what God has said his power will accomplish. Most of the time, we are the ones doubting. We doubt the capability of the anointed. We believe the words of men. We believe the news more than what God has said about you. You know, that was one of the things God was trying to get Gideon to see. When he had that encounter, Georges 6. God, God said, he says, I am with you through the angel. The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of Allah. He was giving him excuses. Why that's not so? God says, go in this your might. This one that I put on you, go in it. You will save my people from the Midianites. He gave another reason. Ah, you don't know my story. You don't know the family I came from. He, 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 said, he said, you may come from the poorest of the family. Listen, he says, I am with you to deliver you. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, say, how much? Say, how much faith do you have in God's empowerment? At times we are, we are doubters. At times we are skeptics. That's why I love Elizabeth. Luke chapter 1 verse 45. Elizabeth said, blessed is she that believed. For there shall be, there shall be a performance of those things that were told by the Lord. Are you a believer or a doubter? 
if God says, if God says that he has empowered you for life, if God says his power and his ability is available to you, listen, who are you going to believe? Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, uh, it says, uh, it says, who had believed the report of the Lord uh, to whom the hand of the Lord has been revealed. It's time to put faith. Put faith. It's time to start believing in, listen, the, uh, believe in the empowerment of God that is on your life. Look at your neighbor and tap your neighbor and say, God will never fail. Say his empowerment will not fail you. Mark 9 23 says, if you can believe, how many things are possible? You know, most of the time, because we don't feel things, we don't see things, uh, we doubt the presence of the veracity of what God has said. Amen, somebody. <laughs> I said amen. <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> I was scheduled to speak at a program yesterday at the conference via Zoom, and something very funny happened. When I wanted to start speaking, all of a sudden my voice started behaving in a very funny way. The voice that has been okay from morning, amen, somebody. And they just started going off course, amen, somebody. And I, I drank some, I mean, some bit of water here and there. You know, one thing I was going through my mind was this. I just started laughing inside, though I couldn't laugh outside because people were watching me because I... I was laughing already. But you know why I was laughing on the inside? I was laughing because I said, I said, Satan, you're already late. I mean, I mean, I mean, nothing happened to me this morning. You now want to bring this as an excuse for, I said, I've lost my voice. I, mean, I said, no. I said, this one cannot work now. You're already late. That. I was saying that inside though because everybody was looking at me in a way. So I couldn't be saying it out. I was saying, I said, <laughs> I said, I'm just sorry for you. <laughs> I mean, I, and I just ignored it. Do you know that as I started speaking, everything started changing, everything started, until everything just got back on track. Listen, you need to know who you are. You need to know what you have. Hello? There's some people here. You have presentations you need to make. You have deadlines. You have people you need to stand before. As you stand before them this year, know that you are not there by yourself. Hear the word of the Lord. They may be the movers and the shakers in your world of influence or dominion. As you stand there, I will give you utterance. You know, I, I know about the feeling of when you start in some circles, your 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 knees begins to hit themselves. Say, hey, oh, bang to one bell. Hey, when they begin to mention the name, say, oh, wow. you are me, you're, you're already gone. It's like when we wanted to defend our project when we were in school and they were mentioning some professors. Hey, say is there, say is there. The Lord help you. <laughs> Because everybody knew, knew who the professor represented. So I was like, ah, I said, praise God. He's not there. If somebody was saying that, I, I, I mean, <laughs> oh my God. God told Jeremiah, he says, say not I'm a child. He says, you are going to go to all the places I send you. I am going to say everything I've sent you. You know what God did? God touched his mouth. Jeremiah 1 verse 8. God touched his mouth. God empowered his mouth. Stop saying I'm a child. Because God is going to take you places beyond your age. At the age of 12, Jesus sat with people who were old enough to be his father. They could not discern the, the, the dimension of wisdom that was flowing through him. And I'm saying this prophetically. Listen, prophetically. God is altering there's a shift that is taking place tables and changing and god is setting you up there's a place where you belong in destiny there's a place where you belong in destiny listen 
Some of you this year, you're going to find yourself in the circuit of people that you have just I mean, read about. Imagine you will find yourself in the circuit. You will find yourself in the same place where they are making decisions in the name of Jesus. There are big breaks coming this year. Big break, major turnarounds. I listen to this. It is because God is causing a shift and God is relocating you to where you belong in the name of Jesus. Believe in what you carry. Let me tell you something about me. I mean, when I was in school, I, I, I was not a, I'm not a bold person. Amen, somebody. I'm not a bold person. I'm a very shy person. What is some of my bodies when they heard that okay, Yemi is in the ministry? <laughs> some of them were laughing and said, Is it really Yemi? He's just ah, he's the one who <laughs> Amen, somebody. And at times I even I'm, I'm amazed at myself <laughs> at the transformation that what God has done. You see, there's nothing God cannot do if you allow him. Don't allow your fear to get the greater part of you. Stop believing in what you carry. Stop believing in the empowerment of God. Have faith that is going to do, is going to be exactly as God has said it. That's what prophet Samuel told Saul. He said, as you leave this place, 4 Samuel 10 verse 6 and verse 7. He says, the spirit of God will come upon you. You'll prophesy with them. You'll be turned to another man. He now told him, he says, and let it be. When these signs are come upon, you ought to do as occasion demand because God is with you. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Look at your neighbor on top of it. Say, believe in the empowerment that is on your life. If you believe that because you have been empowered, you cannot fail, you will not fail. Hello, somebody else. You see, it's our believing. It's our believing. That is the link. You need to have faith in it. If it's going to work, believe it. Let it be stronger than your doubts. Let it be stronger than your worries. Let it be stronger than your fears. Let it be stronger than whatsoever confronts you. Listen to this. By the anointing, by God's empowerment, you are going to birth impossible things. Things that men said could not be done. It will happen in your time. So look at your neighbor and say, start believing in it. Start believing it. Believe in it. That's where the power is believing. It's your belief. It's in your faith. Believe it in it. Stronger than whatever you see around you. Because God's empowerment will work for you in the name of Jesus. Listen. There are printers and there are printers. Amen somebody. <laughs> there are people who are in that same sphere of business as you are. If you believe in the empowerment that you carry, you will be distinguished. There are, listen, when you look at the world, there are several people doing the same thing you are doing. So what will make you stand out? It has to be God's grace. Amen, somebody. It has to be God's heart. And it will single you out. Let me go on because of time. How do you put the empowerment to walk? You put the empowerment to walk by walking. When I say walk, I mean W-L-K now. The first walk is W-O, I mean W-O-R-K. How to put the empowerment to walk. W-O-R-K. How do you put it to walk? By walking. W-A-L-K-I-N-G. Walking. Walking in it. How do you walk in it? Before I say how you walk in it, if you look at Galatians, uh, Galatians 5, 16 says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. He says, if we live in the spirit, verse 25 of Galatians 5, let us also walk. 
One way you walk in the empowerment that you have and you have received, one way you walk in it is by always reminding yourself about the fact that you have been empowered. Hello, somebody. Remind yourself. Let it be in your part of your inner consciousness, your thoughts. Walk in the reality. Listen, carry yourself with the awareness that I am empowered. Hello, somebody in the house. <laughs> you know, at times, if God were to open your eyes of understanding to see your true state in the spirit realm, you will start jubilating. I know somebody was sharing a testimony. We're trying to attack this brother. We're trying to attack him. And they, they couldn't succeed in attacking him. Some people in the whole cult. And after a while, they came and met him. Say, ah, ah. Say, ah, kill me. What, what is this power that is uh, around you? Now, he couldn't see the power physically. But those guys were aware of their efforts to reach him and attack him. But they could not. Look at your neighbor and tap it and say, walk in the consciousness. If this power is going to walk, if this empowerment is going to walk, you need to walk in the consciousness. Say consciousness. Say consciousness. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one of the reasons I love the Yoruba language at times, you know, you see this very funny common line. When a child is leaving home, going somewhere, they say, please remember the the son or the daughter of who you are. Amen, somebody. They're trying to tell the child, remember who you are and whose you belong, I mean, whose you are. You need to remember. You need to remember. See, I need to remember. It's something you must never forget. You must always remember that you carry God's empowerment. You must always remember that I have been empowered. That's how you put it to work. I say to myself, over and over again. Uh, uh, in times uh, of desperation. In times of adversity. In times uh, I say to myself. Uh, over and over again. You are anointed. You are anointed of God. I say it uh, by saying it. Uh, I'm trying to bring myself to the realization. Of what I have received. Because things will happen. Amen somebody. Things will happen around you. Things will happen around you that will want to make you to take your eyes away from what you have received. Never allow that to happen. Amen, somebody? Walk with the mentality. Say mentality. Have that disposition. That's how you walk in it. You have received, it has nothing to do with your feelings. Carry yourself, walk in the reality of someone who has been empowered. Another way you walk in it is by exercising this empowerment that you have received. What do I mean by exercising it? Exercise it in your home. Exercise it in your finance. Exercise it in your neighborhood. Exercise it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> They say there can't be two captains where on the same ship. Yes or no? There can't be two captains. Listen to this. <laughs> they say there's power and what? There is power. Not so. When power meets power, what happens? The lesser power does what? We bow. That's why at times we, we, we don't put God's power. We don't put the empowerment to work. Something happens in your place of work and you just keep quiet, you keep mute. Amen, somebody. You, you, you've forgotten the fact that uh, that's an avenue to exercise. Say exercise. You have to exercise it. Listen, if you don't extend your faith out, uh, you will never know what that power is capable of doing. Hello, somebody in the house. I say hello, somebody in the house. Look at your neighbor and say, put it to test. Put it to test. In your neighborhood, in your business, in your... By all means, let's walk. Let's walk. Say, let's walk. I, I remember a testimony that Baba Adebo shared some years ago about a lady who came to 
met him. He was planning to appear at the U.S. Embassy for a visa appointment. And, you know, he, he prayed for her. And, you know, the day came for the appointment. She was there. <laughs> and after the person looking through all the documents, he said, he said I have not given you the visa. Amen. So much. And, you know, they'll say, go. Amen. So much. And you, you could see the look on her face. Ah, he, he said, she said, my, my, my daddy said it is done. Ah, he, said, he, said, he said, who is your daddy? He said, who, which daddy are you talking about? Because the person probably thought that maybe her daddy is highly flesh and mercy. So when he mentioned it, he said, ah, he said, pastor, I thought you even talk about uh, maybe some highly flesh. He said, yes. He said, my daddy said, and she started, the person started laughing. <laughs> Your daddy, oh, the pastor, are your daddy? <laughs> and the girl was saying, No, he said it, he said it, and whatever he says, it goes back, God backs it up. The woman laughed, laughed, laughed. After a while, she now calmed down. She said, Ah, you know, one thing, you are the person that has made me to laugh today. It's been a long time I've laughed. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Hello, somebody in the house. I mean, no, the, the person reconsidered and gave her the visa. He made somebody. He said, because of this, your daddy. You, you, you seem so confident of this, your daddy. Hello, somebody in the house. Look at your neighbor on top and say, walk, walk, walk in the reality of his empowerment. The Bible says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that is what is happening in the world right now. We walk into the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and this, your staff, they comfort me. Are you in the house this morning? We need to walk in the consciousness. Walk in the consciousness. Glory be to God. I say walk in the consciousness. <laughs> I remember a story that I, I had a man of God share some time ago. Where this man of God was living, there's a tree that at a particular time in the night, you will be hearing voices. People will be gathering to have a meeting there. Voices, strange voices. Amen. So everybody knew the name of it. He said, ah. So people gather there to go and meet, have a meeting. Start be going on for weeks. You know, this man has said, ah, he just came. He said, there can't be two landlords in the same area. There can't be two captains in the same ship. So on this faithful day, he said, I'm going to go there. Took his lantern. Amen. Somebody. It was this of lantern. Say lantern. And, and sat down there. I began to pray. Rusha Paradabakasurabata. No meeting here today. I'm taking over. Who say pro? Tike pro to sakata. Whom pray? You know, you think something is wrong because people are passing. I will listen to what took back to pass. First day, they didn't show up. Amen. Somebody. So, second day, went there again. Ruka Pranoso. He prayed. Tike said. Who prayed? Tike said. Third day, they didn't show up. And that was the last day. That's the last time they showed up because somebody took dominion. Amen. Somebody. Hello, somebody in the house. I feel like saying this to somebody here. Listen, your workplace, uh, you need to begin to take dominion. Take dominion. Take dominion. Don't be quiet. Don't be silent. There are things that comes up. Uh, it's an opportunity for the empowerment to speak. But as long as you keep mute, nothing will happen. Let's speak up. Like they say, Sorosoku, amen, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, walk, 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 walk. Start walking in the empowerment. Then number three, how do we put the empowerment to walk? Stay regularly empowered. Stay regularly empowered. Listen to these God's people. We need to be empowered again and again and again. Listen. God knows what you and I are going to go through in life. That's why he has made provisions uh, for you to be empowered again and again. When you look at Apostle Paul, there's a phrase that was said about him in Acts 9. Acts 9 verse 22. The Bible says, and Saul, who became Paul. The Bible says, Saul increased the more. Some say the more. In strength. Confounding the Jews uh, which dwell at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. What does that mean? Paul was waxing stronger in God's empowerment. 
he was waxing stronger. When you look at this life, you will see that he was regularly empowered. You cannot listen. Yesterday's strength is not sufficient for today's battle. You need new strength uh, for every new day. You need new strength uh, for every, every new season. I was telling somebody this a few weeks ago. The world has changed. And listen, the reality of the 21st century is that the kind of challenges that people who, get sa who got saved last 10 years ago are facing is not the same uh, like some of us who got saved uh, in the 20th century or probably 20, 30 years ago. So you need new strength. Look at your neighbor and say, never allow God's empowerment to get stale. Don't ever get to a point whereby God's oil on your life is stale, is dry. What do you think the Bible says in Jude 1 verse 20? Building up. It didn't say build. It didn't say build. It said building. So I said building. What is that? Keep doing it. Keep doing it. It's present continue. Keep building yourself. Keep building yourself. Keep building yourself. How? Praying the Holy Spirit is one way. You build up yourself. If you're in this service this morning, you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit. With everyone speaking, it's, today is your day. That amen is not born again. Listen. Ah. I can't imagine a Christian who is not filled with God's power in his fullness. I had once lived a life without the Holy Spirit baptism and uh, with the Holy Spirit baptism and I know the difference. When I got saved, I didn't get baptized in the Holy Spirit, I backslid it. Amen somebody. But when I got, let me say it properly, when I rededicated my life, amen somebody. Like one of the things I say, uh, 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 I've given my life to Christ. Uh, uh, well, I think, what did my wife say the other day? Somebody says, I gave my life to Christ. I, I took it back. Amen, somebody. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Rededication. God baptized in the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. Things became different. If you're in this service today, you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit. With every, today's your day. Listen, the power of God is your, is your heritage. One way you stay it up. You say, people don't know at times the value of praying. People say, why are we praying? Ah, you are, you are, you are stirring up your power, the power. You're getting empowered. Amen, somebody. Say after me, say, I need this fresh empowerment. I'm going to close in a minute. Can you get on the keyboard? Colossians 1.11. Paul says, strengthened with all might. I like that. All. Say all. You need every might. You need all his might. Strengthened with all might. According to his glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Listen. God does not want you, or I, you and I to live a powerless life. You are not supposed to be an object of ridicule. You are not supposed to be someone that the devil is kicking all over the place. You are not supposed to be someone that you don't have enough liver to stand. I declare over you today, if there's any area of domination, if there's any area of weakness, where you are fainting and falling, receive strength in the name of Jesus. Every area of failure, every area of struggle is becoming an area of strength for you 2021 in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you are rising, you are rising, you are falling, you are rising, you are falling, that order changes from today in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. I'm speaking prophetically this morning that some of us, we are struggling with habits. We are struggling with things that you want to do away with, but you cannot do away with it. Hear the word of the Lord today. By God's fire. By God's fire. 
I declare in the name of Jesus the yoke of servitude, the yoke of bondage is broken in the name of Jesus. If what I'm saying has something to do with you, I want you to receive it this morning. Reach out by faith. I say the yoke of servitude, the yoke of dominion is broken in the name of Jesus. Receive your liberty. Receive your liberty. Receive your setting free. Listen to this. Walking in that circle, walking in that group of complaint will never help you. You need to severe yourself from every relationship that is not contributing positively to your destiny. The reason you are rising and falling is because of the association you keep. It's time to find a new complaint in 2021. It's time to find a, a new complaint, a new complaint of people. That will put life in you and not take life from you. That will hurt to you and not diminish. I speak by the word of the Lord today. Every association, every association that is not adding profitably, meaningfully to your life. I severe you away from it in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to some people right now. Soul ties, every soul tie. Listen, what you had with that lady, what you had with that man, listen, whatever agreement, whatever bond that be made in the spirit, I break it in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to some people prophetically. Listen, whatever you go to see that man, you go to see that woman, he's always taking you down. You're going down, always going down, always going down. Doing the things you don't want to do. Going against the will of God. Hear the word of the Lord. I'm speaking to you this morning. Receive courage. Receive strength. In the name of Jesus. If what I'm saying pertains to you, say I break free. I can't hear you. Say I break free. Say I break free. That's what we call soul ties. At times it's very strong. Bonds, I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it in the name of Jesus. If there's anybody here this morning suffering under the influence of addicts, addictions, addictions, I break your hold, I break your influence in the name of Jesus. Say, I receive my liberty. Come on, say, let's say, I receive my liberty. Say, I receive my certain free. Lift up your two hands. Say after me, say, Heavenly Father, I receive fresh empowerment upon my life for the journey of 2021. Put your hand on your head and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. I can't hear you pray. Come on, pray, pray, pray this morning. 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 Pray, 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 pray. Pray. Sura la bakata la batakata. Sura la bakato rebalaka. Stir up the power. Stir up the power. Stir up the river. Stir up the river of God within you. Segara la baka porre de beke seri aga pre la balata. Ruseli aga pre la ba. Reli aga pre la bata tore pre de beleta. Libra na mani aga pre de beke se seri aga telega. Hebra na maka pre de beke so seri aga ta. A pre de ke su seri aga tele pre de ke se seri aga tele de. Hebra na maka seri aga tele aga sa. Hebra na kaso reke tele kere tete. Hebra na mani se seri aga te. I'm preligasa, I'm preligasa, I'm preligasa, I'm preligasa, I'm preligasa. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. I speak concerning certain people who are here this morning. Whatever is always pulling you down whenever you try to rise. Today, by reason of the anointing, I terminate that struggle in the name of Jesus. Whatever has caused you to be hidden. Whatever has caused you to be hidden. 
hidden from those who need to see hidden from those who need to help you I declare in the name of Jesus your light is breaking forth you are coming into limelight in the name of Jesus you are coming to limelight in the name of Jesus you are coming to limelight in the name of Jesus I perceive in my spirit this morning there are people here God wants to take you to places you've never been God wants to bring you to circles of influence you've never entered into but God wants to tell you this morning he requires of you consecration set yourself apart set yourself apart set yourself apart rededicate yourself to his purpose rededicate yourself to your life assignment rededicate yourself to his house he will take you farther he will take you farther than what you can imagine in the name of jesus what looks like a dream what looks like a dream what looks like something that is far this year shall be brought closer to you in the name of jesus i prophesy to you this morning by reason of the anointing i declare in the name of jesus that god's empowerment comes upon you afresh afresh for the journey of 2021 afresh for the assignment that is before you this year afresh for you to actualize your dreams and purpose in god afresh in every area of life and endeavor in the name of jesus where others are grounded where others are stranded you will be flying in the name of jesus your race, your journey throughout this year will not be truncated. Your destiny will not be sabotaged. As you rely on his help, you rely on his strength. You are scaling through every order. You are subduing every mountain. You are filling every valley in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and begin to thank him. Lift up your hands and begin to thank him. There's a new glory. <laughs> There's a new glory that is going to emanate from your life. There's a new song that you're going to sing this year. Oh Father, Kirosaka Prada Bakata Whatever you are trying to reach that has been unreachable this year, with ease, you will accomplish it in the name of Jesus. God just showed me something now. <laughs> the forces that you have to contend with. The forces that are mightier than you, stronger than you, God wants me to tell you He's taking care of them already. <laughs> hey! It's not that you cannot, it's not that you don't want to. The mightier forces, God is subduing them in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you this morning the waters will not overwhelm you you will not be drowned this year in the name of Jesus I know we are living a COVID year the realities are there God is telling me something now. God is going to give you strength that you'll be able to adapt to whatever the situation of 2021 presents for you business-wise, career-wise in the name of Jesus 
your story will be like that of a dock a dock put a dock on water it swims put a dock on the ground it walks put a dog throw the dog in the here it flies that will be your story in the name of Jesus lift up your two hands I prophesy to you this morning that by the anointing of the Holy Spirit you will prevail and subdue 2021 in the name of Jesus You are rising. You are rising. You are rising above your competitors. You are rising. You are rising against the above the opposition. You are rising above your competitors. You are rising above your competition. You are rising above every orders. You are rising above every barrier. You are rising in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands and begin to thank him this morning. Karo Shabayakata. Karo Shabayakata. Karo Shabayakata. Karo Shabayakata. Karo Shabayakata. The anointing is here. I sense the power of God. Strong and mighty, strong and mighty, arising on your behalf this year. Father, we give you praise. Father, we honor you this morning. Father, we honor you this morning. Father, we honor you. Come on, lift your hands and thank him. <laughs> Can we stand still? All eyes closed. All eyes bowed. If you're here this morning, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. 